WWE 2K19 X Harper. We're back at it. Second video of the day. This is a new core creation. This is Lance Storm, people. Okay, you can see Lance selected in the bottom right corner of the screen. Big red square. Spent all day yesterday. Literally, my whole day consisted of trying to create Lance Storm around babysitting my fun little nephew who kept disturbing me he's just under two and so he decided to keep coming in the room while I was creating and then he'd want to play so I'd go out and play with him blah blah before I knew it it was like 7 p.m. in the evening and um, I had loads of work to do I had to do a move set actually so what I wanted to do today was show you the creation of Lance Storm which we're gonna do now I'm gonna show you what he looks like go through all the elements with you I'm going to try and give you a, like a, a detailed brief overview if that's possible. But here he is in front of your very eyes. Let's go to the face deformation first and we'll go to... So this is the original. This is basically the original scan that I've got of Lance Storm. Now, for some reason the game has added this really weird shadow just below his mouth. I, I honestly don't know where that's come from because it's not on the face scan um, that I used. Like I said, you can pause this, you can stop it, have a look at any time. But I've changed and manipulated the eyes, the nose, the mouth and the head shape to get this sort of Lance Storm that I wanted. What I noticed with Lance, I created a first version of him and it was his head shape that was the problem. The second I, I went online and I just looked at a different head shape and immediately... In this other profile picture, I noticed that his head was a little bit different than I'd originally made out. And the minute I changed it, I was like, holy crap, I didn't realize that just the head shape would make such a vast difference. So for all you guys out there who are creating cores, just make sure to remember to change the head shape. The head shape is as important as getting the eyes, nose, eyebrows, mouth and ears right. Don't just think that creating a great looking face will make everything better. Always make sure that you get the head shape correct as well. And that goes for the size in terms of the width, the length, and obviously the general shape that's highlighted in blue on the right side of the screen. So that's that bit done. I took a lot, actually it spent, it took a lot of time on Photoshop for me to actually get this where I wanted it to be. When I did download it, I wasn't too happy because you can see on his left eyebrow, you can see a little bit of the eyebrow still on the eyelid. That was a mistake I made um, when I first put the face scan onto the over the model and onto the template what I should have done was something that Defract has talked about before which is making sure that you grab all of the texture when you first do the face deformation make sure that it grabs the whole texture so that when you move it the whole eyebrow moves rather than just a little bit and I just miss that little bit at the end that you can see that's above his eye and that's there so that's my only flaw but I did get a workaround which I will show you in a minute now everything else worked fine so now we'll go back to the end product which is the one that you see so the the first thing you'll notice is the shadowing beneath his his right lip his right lower lip just disappears okay so that's gone and that's relatively easy to get rid of so i'll show you how i did that in a minute Let's go into attire. Okay, so I've got two attires for you. Both of these were taken from WCW. I've got a white and a red and then the reverse red and white. I like the red and white better than the white and red. Um, so I'm going to stick with that while we do the editing. Now, how I change everything, I go to appearance, hair and facial parts. First thing I want to show you is the hair. Now, what I've done here, and I've never done this before. This is something that I've learned for the first time in the game, is that you can actually utilize the head shaving option. Now, the way that you do that, if you notice, this hairstyle actually comes with sideburns. But when you look at the character, there's no sideburns. You can see like a little residue from the texture that was, that was there previously. So you can sort of see like the texture, but that's all. So the way I got rid of that is just going into hair shave designs. And what I did was, I think I went into images for this one. 
Just wait for the game to load. And then what I went into was designs. Then I basically pick whichever. Now, I use this for... And you can already see what it does. What it does is deletes the hair shaving, which is awesome. So what I did was use that for the sideburns to get this sort of straight edge cut. Shortens it off because he didn't have sideburns. We all know that. Now, another bit of advice I would give you is the oval one I found to be quite helpful when if you want to get the guy's receding hairline to be a little bit more accurate, you can use this just to grab a little bit of extra room for you because the oval shape works naturally works really well so as you can see there i've gone a little bit further in and i've tidied up the edges of the shaved part so it looks a little bit more like he's just had a trim fresh cut whatever and it doesn't affect the face scan that you've used it doesn't affect any of the coloration anything like that it literally just takes out the haircut which i think is awesome so that's how I did it, and I'm going to be using head shaving a lot more from now on. It's really helped me in game. It, it helped me a lot to get this Lance Storm haircut. Lance Storm's got a weird freaking haircut, people. If you've seen that guy's square haircut from WCW and ECW, you will know what I mean. And, um, oh, thank you, Crack Pro. I will take a look at that one later. Um... So as you can see, I've cut the hair. I would advise that you do this for your court. Just have a play with it. It's a fun way just to make sure you get haircuts right. I'm definitely going to be utilizing that more often with my coring. Now, the eyes, I've just done the color. I always suggest make sure you get the eyeball color right. The eyeball's default color in the game is too dark. It's um, Let me just show you the bit that I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the white part of the eye. Okay, this fleshy part here. Make sure that you get the right white. I usually use this white here. You can pause it, get this down. It just makes the eyeball look a little bit more natural because most people's eyes, uh, eyeballs, are whiter than they are dark. Um, for some reason, the game sets it really dark as a default color. It doesn't work, doesn't look good. Change that. I added a mustache and then I took the opacity down. I added a goatee and took the opacity down just to give... Because he did have... Um, sort of a, I don't know, stubble around his goatee area, so I, I wanted to maintain that. He does have eyelashes, everyone. I gave him just the standard ones. Now, if you notice from my face scan earlier, what you'll see here is that around his eyes, they're actually quite clear at the moment. They don't look dark. My face scan, and I mentioned this with the eyebrow, the eyebrow was touching his eyelid on his left eye. That doesn't happen anymore because what I've done is I've actually given him eye makeup. I don't usually like doing this, but it was a quick fix to make sure that the eyebrow face scan texture wasn't touching the eyelid. So that's gone now, which is a great change and I'm really happy about that. Other than that, I've got two movable scars. I'm gonna show you what they are. I usually use movable scars for different facial parts that I don't, basically I haven't hidden well. So this dark part that was, you could see there, there was a shadow just below his right lip. And I used this movable scar just to basically patch that up and hide it. Now I'm not gonna change those because I don't wanna lose their positioning and their color. But again, it's another quick fix you can do. If there's a little bit of the face scan that doesn't look right, for me, I'm not prepared to go back to Photoshop and somehow try and recreate the whole thing based on something that I can just quickly edit and nobody really will notice the difference in game. It doesn't affect the way it looks. And um, that is the Lance Storm that I've come out with. So that's the final Lance Storm face that I used. I think this is gonna sound really crap to say, but the further away you get with Lance, the better he looks. I think if you go too close, then it, it just brings out detail that isn't right. But as you get to this sort of position, you can see that it looks a lot like Lance. The profile picture in the game looks immense. It looks just like him, which I'm always happy about when the profile picture looks right. That is a good sign of a good core creation. So that is the attire that I've shown you. Now, as for the legs and how I designed that, I'm gonna show you in the other attire so that you've got something different to look at other than just the red and white all the time. I'm gonna reverse those colors now. So we're gonna go back to the 
other attire that I've got for Lance, which is this one. So what I did here on the clothing, if you're wondering how I did this with the tights, very simple. I just went into Photoshop, created two big triangles, threw them in the game, and then obviously I made sure in Photoshop that I got the color right, matched it with the boots, so it's the same red, and then I just stretched the triangle across the tights, and that's what you're left with, which is his original sort of WCW look and feel attire. So that's that for the attire. Real simple. Everything else is in-game. Um, the boots, everything is in the game. You can just find it yourself. Dead, dead simple. Next, name information. This bit is going to be so, so quick to go through now. Once the loading is done, loading in this game can sometimes be a pain in the backside. Okay, accept that. Name information then. Lance Storm, fortunately, is in the game. Presentation name, Lance Storm, and everything else is sorted from there. I don't tend to do the social media accounts, but if you want to do it, just go online find the guy's real account and do it there for me it doesn't have to be real like that's part of the game i'm just not that bothered about personal information uh he was always booed even when he was a, a face i feel like people booed lance storm uh he's got personal personality traits i've set as loyal i'm going to jump in and show you this one i just set those to what i felt about him now his hometown is not windsor ontario canada it's just ontario or ontario i don't know how people say it um but it is it was somewhere in Ontario, Canada, but for some reason the game would only let me select either Windsor or Toronto. So I was left with choices that actually weren't his hometown. I didn't want to put Toronto, so I just put Windsor. Uh, crowd signs changed those to some ECW ones because he's going to be in my ECW universe mode. And then I applied my formula to his skills, abilities, and attributes and payback. So this is a formula that I've got. It, there's a video on my YouTube channel that you can find. You can have a look on there and it gives you all of the formula you need to create wrestlers. I also have used that formula in my on my laptop. I have about 500 plus wrestlers on there now in a database and I've rated every one of them so that every year I always know what their rating will be. Now those ratings can change but only if they're a current wrestler. Anybody who's not a current wrestler has no way of changing their abilities unless for some reason I think that they're better at something that, than, than they weren't before. So his attributes, he's a 78 overall which you might think it isn't very high but actually in my formula that's a decent score he's like a, a mid card wrestler which I think is fair for Lance Storm he's got a couple of abilities and a payback and then finally his menu screen pose I've set that individually to the one that you can see in front of you I'm not going to accept that because I don't want to change it simply crossed his arms and then we go out of here and you will see his profile picture again just before we finish I'm going to show you him in ring I edited everything with Lance Storm. This is probably the most prepared I've ever been for a core creation of mine. Usually I'm too lazy. So there's Lance Storm in the profile picture. I'm going to come out. We're going to have a little play mode. You're going to get to see Lance live in action now. It's actually the first time I've seen him in the ring in action. So it's not just you getting to watch this one for the first time. I get to watch it too. Right, Lance Storm. So there's Lance. Looks awesome. Again, I'm going to select the red attire just because it's the one I like. I'm not too fussed who he fights, to be honest. But for the sake of realism, let's pick somebody from WCW. Or at least ECW. Let's just go with Lex, okay? I'm going to go with Lex Luger. Uh, let's put him in an arena that he would have wrestled in. It's got to be a WCW one now. I love Road Wild 97. Let's select that. Let's go with the evening. And what I always do as well, just for the sake of, of you guys seeing this match, getting to see his moveset, but also his finishers a little bit quicker, I always go into the custom matches and just give him a couple of finishers, set the default health to low, make the recovery time very long. That way, when you've hit the wrestler, your opponent, and they're down, 
they stay down for a while. It means that you can just try out the match. I don't use that in normal matches, but I do whenever I'm doing like a preview or if I'm doing a story mode, I always go into that and utilize those little attributes. Okay. So Lance Storm, you can see him now on the big screen. Looks, to me, he looks really good. And obviously I'm going to say that because I've created him. You can find him in Community Creations via, obviously, the Superstar category. All you need to do is search the hashtags. You can either just search Lance Storm and then he'll come up. Or you can search any of the hashtags ECWWWF or WCW. He was one of the few guys who was in every one of the brands. And that's why I did that. I'm not trying to troll hashtags or anything. He genuinely was in each uh, organization at some point. So I always like to make sure that I get those into the game so that people can find the character. Anyway, this is Road Wild 97, another arena that I've created. You can get this from Community Creations. Just jump into the arenas or the show category and you can download it there. So Lance Storm's entrance was Kurt Angle. Not really sure why I chose Kurt Angle. I just think it matched his sort of character well. The video I used was Bo Dallas. I like Bo Dallas's because it doesn't have his name in the video. It just has these random things going on. And it just gives the video something to do rather than have like the static WE logo or the logo that turns. I don't like that stuff. So here's Lance in the ring celebrating. He's happy. He's about to get a victory maybe on his debut. Something else I didn't mention with his attire. The knee pads that I selected, for some reason, and I love that it does this, it folds the knee pads underneath the actual kick pads. Now, not all of the knee pads do that. Some of them stick over the top and it makes the whole thing look really awkward. So, whenever you give a wrestler with kick pads knee pads, make sure that you choose ones that go underneath the kick pad. It looks so much better and reali more realistic than the other way around. Now, we all know Lex Luger, so I'm just going to skip his cutscene. So, on to the moveset, people. This moveset took me flipping ages to do last night. He is one of the hardest movesets that I've ever had to do in a game. Because the thing with Lance Storm is that he's not a very popular wrestler. If you didn't already know. Um, he was a mid-card wrestler, essentially. Which means nobody has made any videos on YouTube of his movesets. They usually, if you Google it or go onto YouTube and search, you're usually going to find plenty of movesets for all of your favorite wrestlers. But for some reason, Lance Storm doesn't have any. He's got like three matches that are on YouTube that I could really watch. And the other thing is, is that he was a jobber a lot of the time. So actually, when you watch Lance Storm, he's jobbing most of the time. So you don't even get to see him do many moves. So what I did... I basically watched a few of his matches on my WE network and then tried to create control. some of the moves that he did in those matches. So I've had it might not have been his best move set, but it's definitely Hush moves that he back. did in matches because I've watched about three hours worth of his matches to make sure that I get what I want. And as you can see, there's plenty of suplexes in this move set. There's plenty of technical moves because Lance Storm obviously was a technical wrestler. Now with complete control. We've got the belly to bellies going on. And I'm just going to let this run, let you guys watch what's he's happening in, in the ring a little bit, see now. some of the moves that he's got. Now I this could be huge. maybe should change one of his attributes so that he can actually he pin from moves because I actually Lex didn't Luger do that for him. It. Even though I gave him a really high technical ability, I didn't give him the ability to make a, a pinfall directly from a move. Uh, Lex is doing well, something weird in the corner now. Doesn't really want to do a guys. move on me. There you go, Lance is coming back. Little oh, European go. uppercut there. So let's go back and let's just get straight to the finisher here. I want to show you... He's got two finishers on the game. Just knock Luger down. So there's one of them. Obviously the super kick was important for Lance Storm. The other one is a single Boston Crab. 
which was his main finishing move. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to... I'm going to have to build the momentum. Part of uh, the way that I do my attributes is that I tend to use the momentum attribute or slider, whatever you want to call it. That tends to be my sort of go-to rating reducer. So I tend to make it zero or 36 or whatever it is as the minimum for wrestlers when I'm trying to take their rating down without affecting their actual attributes in the game. There was a little bit of taunt. I've changed as many of the taunts as I can for Lance. I think you'll agree they look good. Now, Lex Luger on my game, I believe, is a 91. So he should be reversing, he, and as you can see, he is reversing Lance a lot more than on my others. And this is part of the formula that I've got, which I've already mentioned. I've got a video for. You can go ahead and watch that. The idea with the formula is to make the game more realistic, where the, be the better wrestlers, the, the championship main event wrestlers, don't get reversed as much as people like Lance Storm or Jobbers. Jobbers basically can't reverse moves. It's like one in every 50 moves they'll be able to reverse something. With Lance Storm, it's sort of like he could reverse one one in every 10 if you're wrestling against him. And then the mid, the upper mid carders, it's probably one in every five. And then I would say that the, the top wrestlers, it's going to be one in every three moves you're going to get reversed. So I like to do it so that it, it, it makes the game difficulty settings a little bit more realistic, makes the game harder or easier depending on who you're wrestling against, which I think matches real life. The worst thing in the world is being Goldberg and trying to do a squash match and then the squash match guy you're fighting reverses every move just because you've set the difficulty level to medium. It doesn't make sense, it's not realistic. So. What I've done is I've changed it, and it works really well it? for me. It works well this enough to the point that I've made a video, I've be. created the formula, and then I've used that in my game. So, let's do a top rope move. Top I do rope. have diving moves for Lance Storm as well. He does do the diving to the outside. He's got a he couple of, like, ECW-style moves. Um, obviously, his stamina's not very good because he's got a low here. setting, so I'm just going to try and let him recover a bit so I can this do an outside suicide dive. Okay, there he goes. He's Let's see control. if I can do this now. I'm terrible. I need to just let you know I'm terrible at suicide dives. So this is going to be hilarious he's in if trouble. this doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to get him to his feet first. Here. Why the referees decide to get involved in here is beyond trouble. me. There you go. Suicide dive. Oh, to the outside. Lance Storm did Look that very here. nicely indeed. What's Let's just whip him back it? into the ring now and keep He's going with this. Trouble. Like I said, I've got slipping. loads of WCW arenas Watch on the game here. as well. Uh, I've done a whole pack of 1997 arenas, so if you like this one, obviously go mind? and download it, but there's also a stack of others that you should download on the game. I really love my arenas this year. Now I've done a great job, control. if I do say so myself. Lex, where you going? Need Lex back in the ring. So, all I want to show you now is the signature. That's what I'm waiting for. I want to show you the signature and the Boston Crab finishing maneuver. Again, with no movesets, it's really hard to tell. When there's no video online of, like, the top 100 moves, it's so hard to tell what the signature move might be. And with Lance Storm, I almost gave him the... Um, the super kick as the signature, but I just decided against it. I didn't think it was the right move for him. I, I think the super kick is his finishing move. It, it was like a good option alongside a, a submission move with the Boston Crab or the single Boston Crab. Okay, come on, Lance. Stop getting tired. You're almost there. Luger's been beaten down to a pulp. Looks to me like he's super Okay, belly to back. We're almost there now. Three more moves, I reckon. I'll do it. Bit of blood, nice. Okay, let's do a limb target one because I do believe I changed. That is a great move that I used to see Lance Storm do. His movesets, by the way, tended to merge sort of a really technical wrestler with a bit of a brawler. And um, it's a strange one because to me, Lance Storm should just stick to technical wrestling moves. But I think for him, he wanted to vary it up. And so he used a lot of brawling style moves as well, which was cool to see. Taking on any more damage here okay. could very well mean the beginning of the now, end. Now, his signature maneuver requires 
that I go to the top rope. So I'm going to go up. I'm going to call Luger up to his feet. He has him right where he wants him. If he sticks this, he is done. And then once he's up, let's do his he's signature. Oh, there you go. Way. Spinning heel oh, kick from the top rope. This one's over, guys. And now let's try and finish this match. I hate the way that it does submissions, by the way. Look at that. I don't want to do a charged finisher. I'm at his legs. Let this me do the actual ugly. finisher, you please. Might want to turn away if you have a it's a card. really weird thing on this game. They, they've they really messed up, actually, with the way that you do submission moves. Because it's not as easy to just get in the right position to do the move. What a brutal beating we've seen. See, it wouldn't actually so let me do the tonight. single Boston Crab, which I'm not impressed with when it doesn't let me do the finisher. So I'm going to have to try and knock him there. down. And try this again and hope that the game just finally lets me do the finisher. For some reason, it's only letting me when I stand near I the one leg. This one is so bizarre. I don't care how tough you okay, are. single Boston Crab. Managed to make it happen. No so that's the finisher. This is actually Lance Storm's finisher now that you're seeing in the game. Wins the match, single Boston Crab. So that is Lance Storm. The next thing you're going to see, and the final thing that I want to show you, is the victory scene, which should come up now. Here is your winner. And I'm pretty sure this is classed as knock him down. They proved you're the better competitor but I just thought tonight. that it was a really good Michael, sort of victory scene for Lance Storm. So that is Lance out. Storm, everyone. You've seen was, the, the attire. You've us. seen the face scan. I've shown you all the parts and the elements. And now, finally, I will finish in Community Creations where you can download him. Just so that you know exactly where to go in Community Creations to find him. As I said before, just go to the hashtag. Uh, and if you just search Lance Storm... He should be in here somewhere. There's this Lance Storm. There's that Lance Storm. Uh, and then a bit further down, because mine hasn't had many yet. It'll be on page... By the looks of things, it's going to be page three or four. Let's go with four. Somewhere. There he is. So there he is on page four at the moment when you search Lance Storm. He's got five downloads, which isn't actually that bad considering I posted this uh, really late last night. So I'm really pleased with that. And then, of course, make sure you know that it's the right person. Make sure you get the right look and the attire. You can see the um, custom entrance victory and move set. Everything's in there that you need. So that is Lance Storm, everyone. You can go and download him now. He's available. It's one of the last cores that I'm going to create in the game simply because I've got no room left for any cores. My whole core list is now full. I've either downloaded or created too many, but it's the best list of cores I've ever had in game. I've got another video in my channel that goes through that. If you want to watch it, just go through the channel now. Have a look at the videos I've got and take a look at that one. It's a recent one that goes through the whole roster. If you like the video, please give it the thumbs up. If you don't, give it the thumbs down, but don't just be the troll that gives thumbs down. Actually leave constructive comments for me. Help me out. I want to make these videos better and more entertaining. If I can do something differently, I want to know about it. Please don't just leave me with the thumbs down. Also, if you're not subscribed and you like the channel, please subscribe. It's worth it. I'll make it worth your time. And obviously with feedback, that's going to help too. Also, you can hit me up on Instagram at xharper.co or on Twitter at xharperco. And just send me a message on there and I'll get back to you. I respond to everyone, good or bad. So just let me know your thoughts. Tweet my stuff all that kind of thing. Anyway, guys, for today, I'm done with videos. I've made two today, which is way more than I thought I would do. Um, I'm going to be at it on universe mode tomorrow, providing my voice gets better. I do a lot of shouting when I'm looking after my nephew because we play games and stuff and I'm always shouting. So my voice just hasn't really had a rest. It feels like it's almost back to normal. So hopefully tomorrow I'll be ready to do the commentary um, the Joey Styles voice that I put on, if you don't know already, is insanely bad. But it's a mess. It makes a, it takes a lot out of my voice. So I have to make sure that whenever I do an ECW Universe Mode video, that my voice is back in business. Um, so that's it, guys. I'm X Harper, and you are awesome. <laughs>